What's going on, everybody? This is John O'Connor of the Behind the Barricade Podcast, and I'm with... Daniel Tao. And a very special, happy 4th of July to everyone listening out here. That's what day it is today that's coming out, even though this is previously recorded. <laughs> happy Independence Day. Absolutely. Da, 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 so, we decided to not have any guests in. Actually, none were really scheduled for today. Just, we like being honest. And we decided to do a quick little warp tour. Audio podcast, I guess? Yeah. I don't know what you would call this. I don't know. Just a free episode. Uh, compared to the paid ones? Yeah. <laughs> everyone pays for all our other episodes. Yes. Everyone pays five ninety nine for each episode because we're that awesome. Oh, my God. Imagine if we actually had like paid episodes where people had to pay like $1.99 for this shit. <laughs> like an MP3. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure we'd quit. No one would buy that shit. No. No one. <laughs> That's why it's free. So if you want to support, you go on iTunes right now. You find our show. Hit that subscribe button. Download all our episodes. And while you're there, give us a nice review and a nice rating. Nice five-star review. Four-star. One dick gave us a one-star. <laughs> I'll never forget that. <laughs> Whoever you were, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we said on Twitter, and I believe maybe other places I'm not too sure of, that we are doing some interviews at Warp Tour. And yeah. believe it or not, again, because I've done Warped Warrior 2014, I think. And that was with, uh, you did one with Mike, Mike Hem, right? He, that uh, Frank Actually, Cairo that, was there? Well, that, that was uh, Riot Fest in Chicago. Oh, uh, Riot Fest. Yeah, this is the one where I interviewed my friends in Danger Kids, uh, Keith Buckley of Every Time I Die, uh, Alan Day of Four Years Strong, and f- a few others I can't think of off the top of my head. So we're just going to go down the list of who's playing the New Jersey date, the one that we're going to be at, July 17th. It's a Sunday, and it's at PNC Bank Art Center. So we just wanted to go through the list of bands we're excited to see, bands we want to interview, and I'm going to tell Dan about like the layout of everything. And it, it's kind of weird if you've ever been to PNC for a regular show. There's stages everywhere on PNC, so half the parking lot is just full of stages. It, we might as well just go into this first. <laughs> yeah, might as well. Yes. I mean, if... Any of you have hasn't been to PNC? There's just one stage, no GA, no uh, you know pit, and just seats and lawn. So that's kind of wanted to bring this up because I've been there for a lot of shows, including Mayhem Fest. So I kind of had an idea how it would be set up. But since it was only GA, you know, John, how's that going to be? Uh, how's that going to work since it's only GA? Is it only going to be in the parking lot for that? No, actually, on the main stage, well, the main PNC stage. Mm-hmm. Let's just go with that. I believe it's going to be like all the – I don't think – no. I'm trying yeah, to because think. what are they going to do with the seats? Is this going to be a free-for-all? No, no, it is a free-for-all. Really? Back in uh, 2014 when I did Warp Tour Press, I saw the band uh, The Story So Far, who was actually on this year also. And they actually played in the amphitheater, and I saw kids just go absolutely nuts and crowd surf in the inside during the seats, like in the seat area. And it was the most awkward thing I've ever seen in my life. That's crazy. And there hasn't, I would, I would think this would cause some kind of, you know, fights and stuff over seats. And, you know, it's the reason why they sell tickets well, for specific yeah, seats. Basically, you know? PNC is layered. You have like the 100 section, which is the orchestra. You have the 200 section, like the mezzanine area. Then you have the 300, the uh, terrace section. And then you have the 400. Then you have the lawn. Mm-hmm. And there's really nothing much going on at the lawn area for PNC. I mean, like, you'll have a couple of kids deciding to mosh up there to the band, like, 100 feet away, 100 yards away, excuse me. Mm-hmm. But during, like, in the orchestra area, that's where kids, like, just get as close as they can, like, two, three people, like, on top of each other in an aisle. Like, it's, like, really a fucking fire hazard. Let's be fucking honest here. Mm. But they have that, and the two main stages are, I believe in that, uh, what was it, the garden area? That they have, like where Mayhem Fest has their side stages, Mm -hmm. I believe that's where like the main stage is going to be. Really? Yeah, Yeah. because no, the the Mayhem had the stages on. It's not the part. Yeah, like you said, it's not the parking lot, but it's that like blacktop area. Kind of reminds me of like a high school, not high school, but a middle school basketball court. You know, it's just you know the the blacktop, and they set up they set up those stages right. They're not always there. Yeah, absolutely. That's where they have. All of those. So now they can. They're, now they're not rotating, right? It's just going to be. Oh, they are rotating. That bands aren't going to be playing at the same time, or they are. 
Well, there's that's that's the beauty of Warped. When there's one band playing that you don't like, there's about three other bands that you could go check out. And hopefully, you don't have two bands that you like playing, you know, playing at the same time. And that's the one thing that's awesome about Warped, like for the, like band wise, but shitty for like a fan wise. Mm-hmm. Like you have to show up early. Like you have to be there right when doors start because you do not know the lineup. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't know what the set times are. You don't know what the schedule is. You just have to go to that ginormous big bubble and. Basically, take a picture with your phones or write down on a piece of paper. Unless you're us, and we'll be there with press passes. And do you think we'll find out beforehand or find before everyone what? else? No, no, no. They they are really secretive about this. Like, but what? they at least let us know, and we can we can plan better than obviously the people there. You know. Again, no. no. Bel- believe it or not, here, here's like my quick experience from 2014. Like. I got there a little later on at about like 12 or 12.30. I was stuck in traffic because Warp Tour is a massive event down at PNC. So I got in about 12, 12.30, and I believe it was Chelsea Grin was finishing up their set, who I believe is also on this tour this year. So, yeah. And they were finishing their set, and I had the press pass and everything ready to go. I ended up having to go behind the PNC main stage. That's where the Warp Tour press area was. Mm-hmm. And they have like sheets, like all lined up. Be it'll say something like, um, "Who wants to interview Four Years Strong?" And then they have like a couple of lines there, and you write your name down. And they have like a general time of when they're going to be there doing interviews. Like it's usually like maybe a half hour to an hour. Mm-hmm. But if like you're the only one, then more pro- more power to you. You have like the entire time with them, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. But there's also like a whole bunch of acts like floating around, like doing ra- random interviews, like asking people. And that's how I ended ended up interviewing the band uh, One OK Rock, and I had no idea who the fuck they were. But they, like their translator came up to me like, "Hey, you know, this is a band from Japan, and they really need press. No one's really giving to giving it to them. Would you like to interview them?" I said, "Yeah, fuck it, why not?" This was like my first time actually interviewing people. I was like, "All right, yeah, why not?" So I I talked with them for a good like maybe five six minutes. I don't know exactly how long it was, but. They ended up being like massive, and that was like one of my biggest interviews. Hmm. Was from like you know, in my eyes, a no name band, and they were just huge in Japan. Like now they're getting well known mm-hmm. in the states. Like they're playing a whole bunch of uh, hard rock and metal festivals and stuff like that. I think they're on the Ozfest out in California. I think the mm-hmm. Ozfest Not Fest type of th- type of deal. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you never know who was going to pop up. Like I've seen Lynn from. Uh, from Paris, walking around, asking people to interview them. I mean, my the company I was working for already did her already. Well, already interviewed her. Excuse me. <laughs> Watch it. Oh, hi oh. <laughs> <laughs> already interviewed her, so I was like, yeah, hey, you know, I'll just let this slide. And boy, do I feel like a dummy. <laughs> so, do people, you know, random musicians in other bands show up? You know, like when we were at the Brooklyn show and the lead singer Under Oath showed up. Was it like that? You have any, you know, guest appearances? You know, you said people are just walking around here and there. Like mm-hmm. if, like there's normally most of the main stage bands aren't doing press. Like they do like their own press. Like if Alternative Press was there, then they do that. Or if you know, another publication was there, that it was big. And like they'll they'll only do those interviews. Like they don't really walk around too much. That's a thing. And to see other, I guess band members there it's kind of rare but unless they are like managing like for example going back to lynn with paris like the lead singer of a loss for words maddie he was or i think he still is paris's manager so like you saw him there and if you wanted to you could have interviewed him and so on and so forth but that's basically what it's like so as far as you know having the press passes and interviewing say when we go to see a band we're not in the crowd right like how does that work you know, for people that have the press passes that are interviewing. Well, press passes are just that one t- one area behind the stage. So, so you you'll be like those people that you see on the stage. We're not. We're not on the stage. No, no. So there's a, a spe- special area by the the crowd. Yeah, it's right behind the main PNC stage. Hmm. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so it's literally on the left hand side. If you just like go through the orchestra section. On the left-hand side, I don't know if you ever noticed it, but do you ever notice the security guards like sitting down in a chair, like on the left-hand and right-hand side of the stage? No. Okay. Well, they usually do that, and on the left-hand side of the stage, 
there's a door. You go through that door, and it leads you to, like, a area on, like, the left-hand side where you just open the door and you go in. That's the press area. If you look straight ahead, it's the stage. Mm. So, I mean, it's pretty cool in that aspect. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's unique. Um, as far as bands that you'd like to see, what uh, which ones excite you the most? Uh, number one on my list, and I've seen them a few times, but this is going to be their last warp tour is Yellow Card. Yeah, I definitely want to see them. I've never seen them live. Oh, Yellow Card Live is a lot well, of I'm fun. I'm glad I'm fun. seeing them last, you know, right now, you know, before they're they're done. Yeah, I mean, Warp Tour isn't their last tour. They are going for a farewell tour, and it's hitting up our area at uh, Starlands Starland. yeah. and also the PlayStation Theater in New York City. Which one are you going to? Are you going to, going to those? I don't know. I don't know yet. I mean... I, I've seen Yellow Card numerous of, uh, mm. numerous times, especially one show back in 2005, 2006, where they played Ramapo College. Mm. So, and for those who don't know, it's it was just like a random college auditorium, and this was right, I think right after Lights and Sounds came out, so whatever year that was. Mm. But that was a fun It was like 2002 show. or something. No, no, no. Uh, Ocean Avenue came out in 2003, I think. Oh, uh, really? Or 04. So maybe... Remember. It was Lights definitely 06 or 07. 07. Yeah, I, I can guarantee you that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely excited to see them. I have never seen them live, and I've always wanted to. Um, for me, they're they're kind of one of those bands that they have a, a handful of songs that I really like and I really enjoy. But as far as albums, the only one really was Paper Walls. That one I loved and complete, you know, from start to finish. But wow, not yeah. a lot of people would say that. Really, dude, I thought that album was was like mint i thought that was their their prime right there they they hit it you know their stride i mean it could album. be their prime but my, my favorite album by them is ocean avenue which is a lot of people's yeah. favorite album but yeah like paper walls like i, I don't want to say the band dismisses it but i don't think they play a lot from paper walls it sucks it's like I, I think it's their best you know because they don't really they keep with that punk and that yellow card sound you know with their mainstream songs they keep it on that album where as far as like ocean avenue They'll have they have four songs and then they kind of, you know, all all the other songs are kind of unique compared to those. Yeah, I, I hear you there. What about what about you, Dan? Other than Yellow Card, Yellow Card. Um, I don't want to say, for me, I don't really know a lot of the. Well, I know a lot of the bands on the the Warp Tour set list. I just don't really listen to them that much. Um, as far as bands I want to see, I guess it's just kind of Newfound Glory, um, Some Forty One, Motionless and White. Um, yellow card like we've we've been mentioning yeah the more um, established bands as well. yeah exactly but new, newfound glory i want to see them just because you know those songs were you know immensely popular when i was a kid and they're actually taking a break after warped yeah well have, have they been playing all this years because i feel like when i hear newfound glories playing at warp tour this year i kind of feel like they've been in a closet hiding and now they're <laughs> they're out well and I, 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 that, it sounds like to me that's not the case i i think they've well, it's been like nonstop touring with them, and I think they're close to like their twentieth year as a band. I want to say maybe two thousand seventeen to two thousand eighteen. Like they started like ninety seven, ninety eight. So just mm-hmm. to give you some perspective on that, mm-hmm. is there any specific bands that you're looking forward to interviewing? Uh, I know it's kind of might be the same kind of question, but anyone in particular? Uh, again, it's who. Like signs up for it. Like I'm not 100 percent sure like who it will be. All I know is like we have a special one on one with Emerosa, mm. so I'm pretty stoked about that. Like, yeah, I've, that's cool. I've been a big fan of theirs for quite a while, mm. and I think we're also doing Set It Off. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, we're still waiting on that email back, but mm-hmm. it, it was they were offered to us. We ob- we obviously said yes, mm-hmm. and we're just waiting on the email back. So maybe by the time this comes out, we have the email back and we know for certain. Mm-hmm. I mean, me personally, obviously, you know, those bands that I mentioned that I want to see, I want to interview. But actually, you know, the band that I don't listen to that I've heard of um, that I'm very familiar with the drummer is uh, The Word Alive and Luke Holland, who if you've if you're a drummer and you're listening and you've never checked him out, I would do it. I would say listening to their music and watching them play the songs doesn't do it justice. You have to watch his YouTube channel and other videos because I feel like off the records, he he's a. 10 times better drummer, you know, playing with uh, uh, Thomas Lang, there we go, who if he's an independent drummer and he can just do things with his hands, that I, I, with his feet that I can't even do with my hands, <laughs> and seeing him on the same stage, and you're like, wait, this guy, wh- what is he doing differently from the records? And then you see him play, and you're like, man, 
He's he's got skills. Yeah, Luke Holland is definitely a beast at drums. Yeah, I would definitely love to love to interview him. If you're listening, Luke, and you're at Warp Tour and we're available, let's do it. Oh, we'll tag the shit out of him. Don't you worry <laughs> about that, Daniel. Let's see what what else. We were also given the band uh, Cold Rain, which is a Japanese uh, rock band, mm-hmm. which I'm pretty hundred percent down for. Again, we're still waiting. It's the same people that set it off. We got a few others that we were thrown at us not really thrown at us but offer to us that's that's a better term yeah <laughs> i don't want to say thrown at be like here if you want to interview them then you have to interview, on us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah if you want to interview these guys you have to take these guys which we actually have <laughs> dealt with before like we're not gonna not for warp tour but <laughs> no not for warp no no for the podcast in and general <laughs> yeah it's kind of strange like the like the members that they turned out to be which you'll hear sooner than later <laughs> But all the, all these secrets decide to come out in the end somehow. So just have to have a keen listen, and it'll be great. But uh, honestly, if Falling in Reverse is doing press, I would love to interview them. Yeah, well, that's uh, lead singer's Ron, uh, Ronnie Radke. Ronnie Radke, yeah, right. good good job, Daniel. I'm I'm impressed. Yeah, I I couldn't say that I've listened to them, nor do I. I'm fond of their music, but. Um... I, I don't know. I, th- I just think it's interesting. I, I would love to inter- interview him just for, you know, the interesting things that have gone on in the past. And, you know, the fact that he was in Escape the Fate, which is a band I kind of, you know, started digging uh, once I found out about his whole story. Yeah, he was. Go uh, figure. Yeah. He was on uh, Dying Is Your Latest Fashion, which is one of my top albums of all time. Really? Ugh. I, I like, uh, for, some, I, for some reason, that, that self-titled album and things after, you know, I'm not 100%, you know, set on those songs but um it's just funny after he left i think they kind of picked up that more mainstream kind of metal rock ish well they ended know, up sound. getting craig mabbit formerly of the band bless the fall to fill in on vocals bless the fall really yeah he, wow he, he was in bless the fall and that's and, a that's a popular name that i'm aware of oh good for you dan look <laughs> oh, at you. you i know a lot of bands everybody <laughs> not yeah, no <laughs> i'm just kind of into the mainstream uh metal and hard rock you know, bands. Yeah. Um, that's what I was saying. A lot of the Warped Tour bands I'm I'm not really familiar with. Although, you know, I've heard of Set It Off and uh, Falling in Reverse. From Ashes to New. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that's a that's like a weird Linkin Park. Um, what's that other rap uh, rock band that's that's kind of popular? Limp Bizkit? No. Corn. Another one. Keep going. Deftones. Keep going. Uh, more uh, more po- like From Ashes now? to New. Yeah. Uh, Papa Roach? No. They're not. They don't really rap that much. Are you I'm talking uh, about, what about like their first album? Rap. <laughs> Come uh, on, exclusively rap. We love these bands. Uh, this band. Well, I mean, issues does it now. All right, uh, you're getting closer. Fuck. Are you serious? It's like they. Uh, it's it's kind of hard off the top of my head. Well, that's why I can't think. I'm trying. <laughs> to have, I'm trying to have you come up with the name Shit. for me. Um. Where it's where it's just strictly like rap rock, where like one person raps and then you yeah. Know, well, yeah, it's 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 like Linkin Park, but less new metal sounding. So it's more whatever sounding, uh, <laughs> like more hard rock sounding. Yeah. For some reason, Underground is sticking in my head. The name of their album, one of their albums, something Underground. Sounds of the Underground. Yeah, maybe. Well, that was a huge tour. No, nah, that's not it. Uh, underground. Wow, this podcast episode just completely went downhill. <laughs> it was so good. Yeah, people are like screaming at like, uh, like it's this band, you it's, idiot. Yeah, it's them, you motherfuckers. What is wrong with you? Ugh. I know after this episode is done, I'm going to be like, are Underground. you kidding me? How did I not know? How did I not remember this? Because I, I like them a lot. I mean, it's just for some reason I I Doesn't Shadows Fall have one? Fart. No. They're just, Something underground? Uh, Hollywood Undead. Oh. How did I not... Hollywood and Dead, that's the band. Oh, yeah. They're, they're sim- really similar. <laughs> um, although I have to say, From Ashes to New has got some questionable songs. But other than that, they're... Define they're questionable. Uh, I just... I, I haven't really listened to them, to be totally honest for with so, you. You have some, you know, those songs that are very, you know, like I said, they're, they're hard rock and they have rap. And then you have those songs where they're, they're just kind of... It's hard to explain, but the, the rap, it's kind of like happier and it's, it's less rock, you know? Mm-hmm. It's just... It's not as mainstream, I guess you could say. It's not as um, appealing um, okay, to someone w- who likes rock. You know, for instance, someone who's just strictly rock and, and metal. It's kind of more into the weird rap, um, like Insane Clown Posse. That's kind of like I would say mixing that with really? their band. Huh. Yeah. 
Okay. It's not like too f- that far. No, no, no them, I understand. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like if you had a baby, you know, like that common that weird know, hybrid analogy system. that everybody says. Okay. Yeah. I definitely have to hear them because that description really like piqued my interest. Vague. Again. It was very vague. It was very vague. Yes. It's just it's it's hard to describe them. Okay. You know. Hey, maybe we can interview them. <laughs> definitely. I. I so like so I said, Dan, I describe this band for everyone. Uh. <laughs> uh. If. Lincoln Park and Insane Clown Posse had a baby, and <laughs> they were kind of a rebel. That's what their music would sound like. <laughs> oh, God. That is going to be one awkward interview, which we will do because we love the awkward. Definitely. <laughs> I'm looking at the other parts of the lineup, and the story so far is on this tour, like I said before. Mm. I wonder if we're going to see any drop kicks. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's the same band. If they do drop kick anybody, hopefully it's not a chick. Hopefully it's not anyone. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if, if it has to be anybody, definitely not a chick if you're a dude. I mean, well, you know, that's the worst. Come on. Sexual harassment and stuff. I mean, at least with a dude, you know, it's, you know, you're you're not looking as many charges as if. Well, well, know, well look, I, I don't want them to do. <sighs> yeah, I, I can't exactly. even. I, I know what you're saying, and I think I agree with that, too. Like, but it's kind of hard to say. Yeah, if it's a big burly dude, that's fine. But if it's like a little small girl, then fuck that, you know. Just don't drop kick anyone. How, exactly. How's that fucking sound, Parker? And if you do <laughs> drop kick your own band member, we we laugh and see that. Unless he couldn't, you know, get up and continue the set, then that would be kind of then that'd be very that'd awkward. be horrible. But you know, we definitely love drop to kick s- a member that you could replace easily. <laughs> how's that sound? And definitely do not like jump off the drum kit and, and totally screw it up because I've seen that happen in certain practices with certain uh, lead yes, singers. Yes. So. Well, yeah. What, what, what are you? What are you alluding to there, Dan? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think you do now. I think I do. Stop jumping on my drum set. Fuck you. <laughs> the Step Brothers. <laughs> I put my nutsack on your drum set. <laughs> John Bottoms play with Moby Dick for real. <laughs> All right. Would you, uh, are you any interested in, in Whitechapel? Yes. Really? I've been digging their last couple albums that they came out with, and they also have a new one. I think, what's it called? Mark of the Blade, I think. I refuse to listen to them. Why? I just don't like it. What I, don't you like? Oh, it's just boring music, yo. I like to say, I like to hear melody, not just like chugging on the guitar. I want that. It's a little more than chugging. I know, but you I don't, don't think you do know. I Dan. do know. You don't <laughs> hear those sick Azalea dying, freaking shadows fall. You know, riffs and unearth even. You know, like bands that have those arpeggios, they have those um, sweet picking things like that. You know, not just strictly on the the lowest string and the lowest strings on the guitar and. You know, tuned all the way down. I like to hear those, you know, melodic runs and, you know. No, I, d- I do hear you there. You know, as far as as far as a musician goes, I'm more into hearing a musical aspect into the guitar playing as far as just, you know, trying to keep it heavy and fast. And, you no, know, I do have to say that the, dr- obviously they're talented musicians, but the drummer, you know, as, as far as, you know, blazing speed, he just he just kills it. That is true. Plus, the vocalist, Phil, is just a, a fucking beast. Yeah. Like, the things he does with his voice, you're like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, that kind of, like, stutter, like, that fast stuttering he does. Which is, like, almost rapping, too. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say that. I didn't want to <laughs> describe it, but it kind of pushed me towards that. It's like, he, he does, like, the like the little, and then he goes, like, yeah. I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> like, you don't really understand what he's saying, and you look at the lyrics, you're like, that's really what he's saying? <laughs> Scream that five times fast? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> What else we got? We got um, issues. I would, I would love to talk with uh, Tyler Carter. Yeah. Issues. They are one hell of a band. As far as interesting names, Knuckle Puck. Yeah, Knuckle Puck. They're, they're a big pop punk band. Yeah. They're getting up there. They're part of that new wave of pop punk. I guess just because of the name, that kind of that kind of sticks with you. And I've heard it once, and I I, for, I see it on here, and I'm like, oh yeah, I've definitely heard that that name. Quick, you know, Dan. Wh- a wh- times. Where's Knuckle Puck from? I have no clue. Mighty Ducks. Oh, I thought you meant the the band. <laughs> of course, <laughs> that's what Kenyon Thompson did. Yeah, what was it? The second one wasn't that, that? That was the guy that was in um, Good Burger, right? Kenyon Thompson. Uh, yeah. Yes. All right. He's also on SNL right now. Yeah, but he would like flip up the puck where it's standing straight up, and then just like whack it, and apparently it went different directions, <laughs> which does not work. <laughs> and I love the camera that like it's like moving in that weird <laughs> awkwardly. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, it just knows exactly where the goalie's going to go and just knows exactly to go the opposite way. Just Yes, I know it's a movie, ladies and gentlemen. Don't be fucking tweeting at me. <laughs> Say, oh, well, it's just a movie. They're supposed to win. Uh, yeah, I get it. All right. <laughs> what 
What else do we got? We have uh, Icy Stars, who have actually been around for quite a while. Mm-hmm. And I think we were supposed to interview them. I think they were another one of those bands that just like didn't work out for whatever reason, but maybe Warp Tour. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in the future, definitely. Yeah, I've, I've been a fan of theirs for a while. Like I've seen them perform quite a bit. I've, seen, I've been seeing a lot of these band names pop up here and there. I'm definitely going to have to start checking these out. You know, like Icy Stars and, you know, not falling in reverse, but set it off. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely a lot of band names I, I hear on the regular um, that are on this, you know, this set list. Yeah. And another band, like I'm literally just going to the list. And I know they're right next to Icy Stars, but Ice Nine Kills. Have you ever heard of them, Dan? Nope. They're kind of, they're like a scene band. A scene band. A scene band. They're like a scene Not band. Really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just like most of these others. But they thrive on their music videos. Mm. Like they have like some songs where it's it's heavy and they have like screaming and they have the singing basically done by the by the lead singer. But they always have like a th- awesome theme to their videos. Like the last video they put out was a Carrie theme. Mm. Like the movie Carrie. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Which was pretty damn cool how they did all of that. And then they did they like circled it around where it was like they did like a little modern day twist to it. Like it's really well done. Like they really know how to do their videos. So are they really only known for their music videos or is like that their niche, I guess you could say? I guess so, but I mean they've been around for quite a while now. Mm. Like they've I don't want to say they've never gotten big, but they should be a lot bigger than what they already are. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's causing them to not be big, but mm-hmm. I mean, they're, they're definitely a, one, one, of, one of my favorites on this tour, which I would definitely love to talk with and see their set because they are extremely entertaining. Plus the whole thing that happened with them in Absolute Punk, I still laugh at to this day. And what was that, John? Uh, that was, I believe, this is coming from like secondhand people on the website Absolute Punk, which is now Chorus.fm, which is like the dumbest name in the world. <laughs> Sorry, but it really is. I believe they're, the main guy on that website, his name is Jason Tate. I think he wrote a review of Ice Nine Kills, one of their albums, and he completely trashed it, which he does a lot because I, I think he might be a dick. I think he might be an asshole. And I think they love trashing albums. They really do. Like They try to be like the cool, hip website in the room. It's like, oh, you listen to that band? I, I listen to Radiohead because I really understand. No, Radiohead sucks. Let's be fucking honest here. <laughs> they're, fuck, they're a fucking terrible band. And yes, it's my opinion. I don't speak for Behind the Barricade or Dan or whoever yeah, else. Yeah, because I don't really listen to them that much. So yeah, I, 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 I can't mean, confirm or deny Creep was a your good song. accusations. I'm a yeah, creep. of course. You know that's like their one hit wonder. And oh, they had come up police. <laughs> I mean, actually, you know, looking from the looking at the set list now, I think I don't really listen to them. I I know what they're about, but as far as an interesting band, I'd like to you know pr- see perform live is Less Than Jake. You know, with that ska, that ska, you know, style. They are fun, but let me let me continue on with this story. (laughs) Continue. Thank you. So, anyways, I believe Jason Tate trashed them or whatever else, and then Ice Nine Kills. I thought that story was over. No, there's actually a funny twist to all this. Ice Nine Kills went out on tour with whoever what was there, and they actually had a T-shirt with Jason Tate's photo on there that says "Fuck Jason Tate." Wow, (laughs) we need to get those (laughs) T-shirts. Well, let's go back to Less Than Jake. Yeah. Less Than Jake is a very fun live band. They always have like wacky costumes where they come on stage with. And I, I don't know. I've never really taken the time to listen to ska, but I don't know. Funny uh, quick story. I was in a drum camp uh, when I was, I think it was a senior, but junior or senior in high school, I went up to the uh, University of Massachusetts for a drum set camp. And there was a drummer there, you know, at the time. This was kind of like when I was beginning to get into drums and a drum set, at least. Obviously, I've been playing, you know, snare drum my, yeah, yeah. my whole life in band and stuff. But, you know, there was a, a drummer there that was in, in Sky and he was just amazing, you know, and he would just, you know, do these, uh, you know, these fills and, the, and these grooves, you know, very, very busy things. And I'm just sitting there like, you know, wow, this drummer is sick. And, you know, he's into Sky. And if, it's always been like in my mind to check out Sky and because, you know, I love that, you know, I, I love keyboards and music, you know, synths in, in metal. So, you know, why not add, you know, horns and, you know, interesting, um, you know, harmonicas into, you know, yeah. songs, you know, and, and Sky is fun music. 
Like, there's no, like, depressing ska band, even though I think you'd be a millionaire yeah. if you ever came out with that. And the one thing, actually, about this drummer is it was kind of something I'd like to see is it was not the typical, like, happy, you know, ska. It was kind of like a more hard, harder rock band with, you know, with the ska elements. You know, I'd, I lo- I'd love to see that, you know, a band that's not as happy sounding, that's more, you know, dark in tone. But has the you know the horns and the the harmonica and stuff like that you know that's in that band would be called Folly. Really? They were a, they were a semi big band within the New Jersey scene. Like I'm going back to like maybe 2002 to like 2006. They ended up breaking up, but they call themselves ska core, where it was a mixture of ska music and hardcore music, and it was one phenomenal mix. Mm. Like, all their shows were fucking psychotic because, like, one second you're, like, slam dancing and, like, moshing. Next thing you know, you're two-stepping. Mm. It, it was it was very strange, but, dude, I loved Folly. Folly was fucking awesome. Yeah, I don't know if I'd say I would want to see, like, the hardcore mix. Obviously, you know, definitely would check out Folly. But just something more, you know, more rock and, you know, emo- I guess you could say emotional sounding. You know, as com- you know, a different, you know, side of the spectrum as far as... You know, motion goes and not being as happy sounding, but, you know, kind of like that dark, you know, oh, basically no, no, the tone that like it. Breaking Benjamin and all those third, three is Grace and Disturb. They kind of, you know, they that theme that they go off. So of. why not come out with a ska band that does ska covers of hard rock and metal? Let's do it. That that sounds awesome. <laughs> if you're listening, do not steal our idea. Nope. Copyrighted. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, what do they, what do they call that when it's when it, you don't have to you don't have to copyright, but if it's recorded. That's kind of along the same lines. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. But yeah. we've got you on that one. We've recorded it. Yeah, and you know what? We're going to burn this episode to a CD and then mail it to ourselves. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah, you can also old, do that, old, too. Yeah, the old, uh, olden day copywriting. Yep. So, yeah. fuck all you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, you also have uh, Real Big Fish, which is one of my favorite ska bands and one of my favorite bands in general. Really? Yeah, they, they've been featured in a lot of things. Like, a, a lot of... Uh, uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone movies. Isn't uh, Westbound Train another one? Isn't, aren't they a ska band? I believe so. I'm trying uh-huh. to think off the top of my head. I can't remember. Because um, if the, if it is the case, my uh, it, it's funny. The, my band director in high school, you know, we have like this career day thing, and he was going on. Uh, he was uh, discussing how they were, you know, very um, not pushy, but they were very into. You know, seeing how their 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 songs are, and you know, are they in key? Are they in tune? And you know, how does it sound recording wise? And he said that after helping them, they you know they got a record deal. Well, I don't know if they, that was the reason why they got signed, but you know, through their hard work with him and and outside of it, they became signed and 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 the now. rest is history. Exactly. <laughs> so I mean, that's the beautiful part about about Warp Tour. There are. Rap rock bands on there. There are ska bands. Heavy there's metal, metal bands. bands. <laughs> there's pop punk bands. There's something for everyone. And like I've been going to Warp Tour since I think 2006, 2007, and just to see what it became and and just knowing that this is on their I think it's close to their 25th year. I think maybe like I think like this one's like their 23rd year, and. And it, just to see the changes from 2006, 2007 to, you know, exactly 10 years later, it's great that tour still maintained its roots and has a whole bunch of different acts on, like, 17 different stages. Hmm. And I would never know because this is my first time ever going to Warp Tour. Wow. You, yeah. you really missed out on a lot of yeah. shit. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, the Mayhem was more of, you know, my style of bands. Um, I mean, like then this, again, it was the same tour. Yeah, but though. then yeah, then again, Warp Tour is kind of mayhem, but with a lot more bands. Yeah, Mayhem Fest was basically the death metal version of Warp Tour, mm. or like the popular mainstream metal. At least initially, they were. Now they they kind of fell off and kind of were in the indie st- indie type of yeah. you know, metal bands. But I mean, that's the funny part because almost all of those Mayhem bands. Mostly start off on Warped Tour. Like the mm. bands that like got big over time start off on Warped. Mm. Like Kill Switch Engage was on Warped Tour. Mm. Bull from My Valentine was on Warped Warp Tour. A which Treyu. we are going to miss. What's up? Or which we are going to miss. Yes. Apparently they start, I think, the date after. Sucks. I think in Noblesville, Indiana Bullet. or something like that. Yeah, they have like Bull from My Valentine, A Treyu, both play. I'm like, God damn it, those are like two big bands of mine that I'd love to see again. But mm. eh, Oh, well. Yep. 
So I think that basically wraps it up, right? Meh. Yeah, I think we covered everything. Uh, I'm trying to think. That's about it. That's about it. All right, uh, everyone. Thanks for listening, and please, uh, you know, if if you do subscribe or check us out on iTunes, please review. You know, even if you give us a two, we we need those reviews up there. Um, you could just rate us as well, but we'd really like to see the written review and you know help help bring this to the top and promote music and you know promote what we're doing because you know. Yeah, that's the thing. That's what iTunes really looks lo- looks at. They don't care about like the downloads or like the subscriptions, more or less. Like, I mean, it's maybe like twenty percent on that chart. They're looking at all the reviews and they're looking at the ratings. The more reviews and ratings we get, the higher we chart. The more people that see it, and in the end, the more people check out all these great bands that we have on the show because all the bands we have on on the show we enjoy to some aspect like we really don't take bands that we don't like mm-hmm. i mean if like if i hear a band that sounds exactly the same i'll be like yeah i don't think we're i don't think we have room for you or whatever like i make up an excuse like i don't want to flat out say okay you're boring as shit i mean i i have said that before to bands mm-hmm. but you know I, you know it doesn't pay off to be a dick but you know all the bands that we have on here we end up becoming friends with like we stay, we stay in contact with a lot of people. Like for example, like episode, I don't know which one it was eleven, the episode where we had Jamie on. Mm. I actually met up with him at a Mets game. Recently, really? yeah, like about like two weeks ago, I saw that he was in town at a Mets game, and I was there too. I was like, shit, let's meet up, and we did. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah that's the power of social media and, uh, and Twitter, and yeah, exactly. Plus, he wants to come back on the show, which we're definitely down definitely, for. and then. Like we, like we always say, if you're playing in the area and you've been on the podcast or want to be on the podcast, we'll definitely invite us to a show. And, you know, don't be strangers. We'll definitely come out and even maybe write your review or do some footage and some coverage. Yeah, exactly. Since we do have a website coming out. Definitely. <laughs> yes. Just not sure when, but it's in the works. Yeah. We've got our domains. <laughs> yes, we do. And we're, well, that's I don't one. know which one we are using. That's like one fifth of the battle. Yeah, yeah one fifth. <laughs> It's yeah. like a little eensy beansy, like <laughs> yeah. And I mean, look, if anyone out here really wants to help us out, like we're we're more than willing to give you guys a shot. Like we're we're looking for you know photographers, we're looking for interviewers, we're looking for writers, like album reviews or concert reviews, like whatever you want to do. Like we're open for. It. Like we need a lot of people. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of hard to just be in the one area. I mean, right now we have four people. It's you and you and me, we have Tori, who's also in the New Jersey area, and then we have uh, Tiffany, who's been fucking killing it for us lately. And she's down in Maryland. Like she goes to a lot of shows. Like she'll be at like two Warp tours herself. Like one of them's in Pennsylvania, I think, and the other one I want to say in Maryland or Virginia. Like I, I, as bad as it sounds, she gets around with these shows. <laughs> As bad as that sounds. And but. she helps us out with our with our websites and Yeah, she was the one who came up with our logo, which is fucking amazing, man. So yeah, if you if you like our logo and you want some work done, just hit up Tiffany. It's what? It's it's metal militia met uh I, her, I, her handles? Uh I, it's like Metalicious Mama or something. I think that was her title. I think she's now Tiffany underscore BTB. Well, look, if you go on to our Twitter Twitter.com slash behind the case, C A D E. In the biography section or the about me section or whatever the fuck it's called on the left hand side, you have all of our Twitter handles. So you could follow us all. Uh, just a bit of caution for you. I really don't follow back or really check my Twitter, even though I have like 300 followers, which is pretty cool. Oh, look at you. You're yeah. a rock star. Well, don't. I, well, you do have more than me. No, I have like 230 something. Really? Yeah. I think you had a lot more. No. Shit. Anyways, you know, you you can reach out to any of us. We're more than likely going to talk. If you want to talk with Dan, you could just tweet at him at R C K D R U M M three R. Yeah, yeah. Because he's still, he's still a fucking twelve year old. Yeah, I use that for everything. Credit card. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! Totally gonna it's setting myself up for identity theft. Yes. So all you have to do is just type that in. And, and then you need to know my password, which is ridiculously hard to, you know, crack. So it's good luck. It's password. <laughs> it's red. I knew it. Even though, like, most sites you can only have three words. Yeah, that's Or why. three letters, rather. That was the joke. I know. <laughs> I know. I, all like, right. I like explaining things. We're going, we're going off on a tangent. Let's end this. Yes. So happy 4th of July to everyone. If you would like to, please subscribe to the show. Helps us out. Reviews and ratings, please, people. 
kick some ass. It's awesome. You can also follow us on our Facebook, facebook.com slash behind the barricade. Twitter again is at behind the Cade, C A D E Instagram. I swear to you, we're going to have more shit up there. I promise you Instagram.com slash behind the barricade and yeah, website coming soon. We're also coming out with business cards. I'm pretty stoked about that. Yeah, you. Yeah. Uh huh. We're fucking legit. Too legit to quit. AA. And yes, I will. I promise I will never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah. Oh god, enough. Trailer Park Boys, man. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> you know, last season was pretty much a dud. But yeah, and good. even though he's not coming back anymore. Yep. J Rock's not coming back. Neither is Lucy. The show's but, over. Yes, basically. But anyways, enjoy your Fourth of July. Don't become like Jason Pierre Paul. Use protection. Keep your fingers. Later. <laughs>